Hey guys, I just want to share what happened a couple of weeks ago because I received an email from YouTube when they said that they have been removing my most viral video from their platform. And it was all because of this. There. You know, you cannot talk about it today and it's a lot of censorship around it. So in the email they explained to me that the reason they took it away was because I was going against some of the restrictions that were, came from the authorities. So that's, in my opinion, a censorship that you're taking away all the different views and all the things around what is happening in the world today. The name of that video was The Mark of the Beast, Is It Here? And it was really a viral video. It was my most viral video. It was like 175,000 views and thousands of likes and comments. And most of the people watched it really liked it because they have been pushing the like button and it was like 97.5% of all the people watching it really liked it. So it went viral and it was very popular. So of course they removed it because I was speaking about a really sensitive uh, things like the mark of the beast, the end times, about the vaccination and about what is going to happen if we compromise with the mark of the beast in the future. So they removed it and that's why I want to share a message today with you that really go deeper into it's time to wake up. Uh, now I speak to you believers because you understand what I'm talking about. This is not only close to the end times, this is the end times. And we see the censorship going on, but we also see the restriction coming that is not going to lead to an easier way for us to live. For example, you maybe as me have seen that you cannot more you cannot see each other in the church anymore because they have closed it down. You cannot be more than like, like in here where I live, six people gathering together in one place. And you always have to wear this mask. If you don't do it, they will fine you. And that's most of us we cannot afford to pay a 200 euro fine. So that's how it is today, and that's why I'm doing this. Uh, video because what I'm really seeing right now is that the way of doing church in the Western civilization is a church that only is going to work in a place where there is no persecution. I have talked about this before so I'm not going to repeat myself too much but I really want to encourage you through this video to just go into the scripture especially go into the book of Acts and search for it yourself. And you will find that the most of the times when they're talking about believers coming together, it's not talking about a big church building, it's talking about believers coming together in the homes. And if we are looking to the church that is persecuted today, especially in Middle East or China, Asia, then we see that they are not meeting up in these buildings and Sundays or doing like mega churches, they are all going underground and thousands comes to Christ every day in these areas because they are sharing the gospel they are making disciples and they're growing much more than we do here in the Western civilization that we are pretty lukewarm in this situation Jesus never called us to build churches to be a church in that kind of way because Jesus called us to be a disciple and make disciple. That means that we make disciples and that is not really the same as doing church. So our doing church system, maybe we want to have the tradition still there. So what happened now when everything is closing down is that not many churches are saying, okay, let's do it on the online way. So we just put up a camera and we preaching the, uh, the gospel through the camera and everyone can be at home and they can just watch it and follow our sermons on the internet. I can tell you that is not to make disciples. To make disciples, that means that we need to be in connection with people. That means that we have to meet one another to help one another to grow. We have to take care of one another. And I can tell you one thing that we are missing today is that we need to hug one another. We have to see each other physically because that's how we make disciples. For a couple of years ago, me and my wife heard about something called Discovery Bible Study. And it was really an eye-opener for us. It was really a practical way to studying the Bible together and how we could grow and see disciples be made. Because that's uh, the way to do it in, for example, Iran, that is the 
biggest uh, movement right now where, where people come to faith every day no place on earth is growing so fast as it does in Iran in the persecuted church and they are going underground they are meeting in houses and they are studying the Bible together and they have not the focus in this Bible study to make people to understand the doctrines of the congregations or where they belong to they have the focus to focus on to let see what the scripture says and let's obey it let's obey the commands of Jesus and learn to grow from that so that's the way we do in discipleship and when we are meeting in like these study groups uh, we are just coming together we spending time together of course and just getting to know one another but we are still we are just asking questions about what we're reading in the Bible so we are reading in the Bible and we are asking four questions that is all about what does the scripture we read about today talk about God Jesus and his plan what does it says about man and if this really is the word of God what how shall we apply it in our life and the fourth question is and this is very important and this is how they're growing who shall we tell so what they are doing they are sharing what they are learning every week with others they're going out to reach out to people their neighbors their friends their family and they are just letting the gospel be spreading in these hard places but I think, okay, we are not living in that kind of uh, circumstance, maybe when we are living here in uh, Europe or the United States or wherever we are, but we understand that we can apply this in a way of making disciples. So what I want to encourage you to do, and I can go deeper into this and talk more about how you can do it more practically in the group. So let me know if you are interested and I will make a video about it and talk about more about this discovery Bible study. So we have done this for a couple of years now and we have seen a lot of fruit coming from it. And we are doing it right now. And the best thing is when we do it is that we can meet in homes. We can meet just a few of us coming together, studying the Bible, uh, helping one another to grow. And we are encourage one another to keep following Jesus. So what I want to encourage you to do is to open up your house. Just invite your friends, your family members, and the people that are around you. They don't have to be believers, really. But just invite them to your house. Say that we will, once a week, we will study the Bible together. And just meet up with them in a small group that you don't break in the law, because we, of course, we shall not break the law. But this is the way of doing it. So we're just coming together, just bring them together, because people need to meet. You know, I doing, uh, this uh, video channel and I'm doing some preaching on the, on the YouTube but I can tell you I don't make disciples right now this is not m disciple making what this is this is to encourage you to equip you and just help you out in way to grow but it's not disciple because I don't know you I don't know what you are going through and I cannot just go into your situation but a person that are close to you that are growing maybe more mature than you are in faith that person can help you grow that's why we need the local place when we are meeting up with believers. So let what the enemy is trying to do for evil, let make it for good. Like, let us make us go back to the book of Acts and go back to how we were supposed to live and just let this be the part of what God is doing. This is a great movement right now, but it's two different ditches. You cannot go back to the way church was before, so we need to go, go forward. And I just want to encourage you with this message and I will make more videos about it in the future. But please let me know if you have something to put in or you want to just know something more about what I said. And God bless you all and see you next time. Bye bye.